Ես չենտան ստուդիաշի մոբրձանդնեն, առաջովուլ է բրիվի ադամյանևի, ձալի են սայնտերես ու միսիոներևի ռաջադա ջիլ գոպալևի։ I'm very pleased that you took time and came to our program and it's really honor for us. Actually, I'm having a first time Indian guest, so from India, and I cannot wait the dish you will make today. Please tell us what it is. <laughs> so, what we're making is a, what is called begum barta, which is means an eggplant dish that is uh, uh, smashed and fried and okay. eaten with rice. It's a dry vegetable. Wow! Very very famous in, in India. Very good. And uh, this we can tell audience what we did. So, yeah, do you want to say anything? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, and we can start now we can to make our sure. dish. And because there is a lot of brinjal sure. in Georgia, uh -huh. we thought we will introduce this dish right so it can become very popular here right. because people generally eat a lot of brinjal dish in georgia right. that is what we found very in restaurant good. you are coming from the country from the homeland of a great human being exactly. who brought the freedom era mm -hmm. freedom century mm -hmm. to the world mm -hmm. mahatma gandhi yes, yes yes please tell us a little bit more about him you see we uh, we came to georgia because mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Gandhi Foundation Georgia would like to organize a training program for young people okay. because they want to learn from Gandhian traditions. See, Gandhi uh, brought freedom to India through nonviolent method. So now, in all over the world, whether it is Nelson Mandela or Martin Luther King, many people got inspired by Gandhi's work in the field of nonviolence. But Gandhi says nonviolence should go with justice. See, nonviolence in itself uh, will have no place unless the society is based on in a principle of justice. So, what we are trying in India is to bring Gandhi's principle into practice and help people to understand the value of justice in the society because justice will bring peace and peace will ultimately make the society more non-violent. This is what Gandhi right. taught us. Right. So I, we understood that in Georgia there is a great take for it. People are quite excited by this idea of making a non-violent society. And when you speak about non-violent society, you are speaking of, about non-violent education, non-violent economy, non-violent way of governing the country. So all put together, you create a non-violent society. And if we can create a non-violent society globally, then there is no war, there is no problem. Right? True. So we, That's we, exactly what we need, yeah. not just in Georgia, yeah, but in no. a worldwide. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great feeling that when you, when you go to any part of the world, because just because you have come from the country of Gandhi, you get recognized. So that gives you great satisfaction that one person could do so much that generations are benefiting from his work. And we also have the history of uh, Lord Buddha, the story of sacrifice. Uh, we also had L Lord Mahavira, the one who initiated the Jain religion. Right? So there are many, many characters from whom Gandhi drew inspiration. So when we think about Gandhi, we also think about all these characters who inspired him. Gandhi's work is uh, half done. Yes, there's a lot, long way to go because Gandhi is not the name of a person, it is the name of an idea. On one side you feel satisfied because you are coming from the country of Gandhi. On the other side you feel morally responsible that you need to take Gandhi's work ahead. Basically the, the Gandhi Institute at the university mm -hmm. is to work with professors to put nonviolence into their curriculum. In fact. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and to help young people understand the teachings of Mahatma Gandhi at the university. But it's more than just a studies, it's a bit of a, it's a perspective 
yes. on how to do how to build a nonviolent society, mm -hmm. as Raj Gopal was saying. So this is the center uh, and institute, but the Gandhi Foundation is broader, and that is supporting many activities in Georgia. Uh, in rural development and urban development that will be helping people to implement uh, a more Gandhian, non-violent way of doing economic development, social right. development, educational sure. development. Mm. Right, that's a great... See, the Gandhi's, mm -hmm. Gandhi's um, quotes are very, very important. You mm -hmm. know, Gandhi writes uh, that there is enough for everyone's need in the world there is not enough for anybody's greed. So we believe that if, if the development model is greed-based, mm -hmm. that will help some people to accumulate and millions of people will go hungry without anything. So through a Gandhian model of development, what you ultimately create is called Sarvodaya. Sarvodaya means well-being of all. That is a concept Gandhi gave. So he says any development model, any governance, should provide justice to everyone, not only some. So the concept of Sarvodaya is very dear to us, that how do you make a Sarvodaya society, well-being of all, not only some. So the world has to advance a lot. So we understand it, even in Georgia, people are really looking for a model uh, that will provide justice to everybody, right. not, not only to right. some people. Well, for Gandhi, uh, there is no mm, time, there is no uh, modern, no. there is no, uh, he's uh, he's Order. not like out of fashion, no. he's always, yeah. he will be always, yeah, yeah. and he's always will be our example, uh, we, will, we should all follow him, read yeah. his books, read uh, everything about him, Absolutely. to implement more, to bring him more in our lives. So Absolutely. there is no um, uh, who, Time period. which country he belongs. Yeah. He belongs to everybody. Mm. Yeah, so he he belongs to, to yeah, exactly. Right? He belongs to humanity. So uh, and more people like you will uh, take Gandhi's message to countries like Georgia. Yes. Uh, there will be no better place than Earth. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell so, you, Georgia is such a beautiful place. I right. mean, we, we, this is my second visit, and this is the third visit of Jill. And we think this is this is a paradise on Earth. Really? Right? Such and beautiful right. water sources, such beautiful land. True. And I'd like to say very interesting thing. Hmm. Rom Kalbaton Gili Spesebi Aris Kartuli. Kalbaton Gili Gahalt Nagashize. Quite Missy Papa, Ifo Constantine Nagashize. So that's what I'm explaining now yeah. that you yeah, have yeah. come from good. the Georgian roots. And tell us a little bit more your roots. How roots, yes. Well, uh, Konstantin Mihailovich Nagashize came from Guria, his family, but he grew up in Batumi. We went to his house in Batumi, and he, his father owned the tea estates in Ajaria. And okay. his, gra his mother uh, was from the Dadiani family. So uh, he grew up as, a, as an aristocrat. And uh, at just in about 1916, he went to study in England. And after the invasion, uh, after the Bolshevik army, came into Georgia, uh, his family wrote to him and said, please stay there, don't come back. So he met my grandmother, who was an opera singer in uh, England and moved to Canada. And from there, he, his uh, eldest was my mother. Uh, uh, and hmm. her name was uh, Sonia Nakishitsa. Wow, and, very uh, good. See, it Ari Kargeba, Pesui Ari Kargeba, Sisklis Ivili, Upalot Armidista, Mainz Brundeba, Sakartoloshi, Zalia, Nadrez Asuli, Sura, Saukune, Bistin, Zasuli, Emigranti. Actually, my grandfather came back after 50 years and touched the earth and kissed the ground. And uh, thereafter, all our family members. And we will talk about how did you two met each other in just a few yeah. minutes. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Many, many people come to India because of this exotic 
ideas you know it's like the snake charmers and taj mahal and elephant ride and you know everything is so beautiful india is built by its people you know 65% of indians are still in farms doing agriculture and not because it is mechanized agriculture it is very decentralized uh, small scale farming and these are the people who are producing food for india and also part of the food getting exported it is basically an agriculture country but slowly advancing in the field of technology as well colonization has brought a lot of problems uh, because the, during the period of colonization india lost many things and it it lost its glory and it lost its its self sufficiency and it became poor because most of our resources were taken by the british so now there is a huge task in terms of rebuilding for the 69 years people are trying to rebuild the nation but it will take many more years to rebuild the nation like george it takes years and years to rebuild the nation all the spices were the attraction for many people to come to india okay. the colonization of india has a lot to do with uh, the rich spices see right. when vasco da gama came some 550 years back why was he coming it was in search of uh, spices right uh -huh. so India is very well known for its spices and uh, very spicy food you know very right. often people who come from outside mm -hmm. will find it absolutely difficult to eat indian food because they are too spicy i'm now going to put in we do not want to brown the onion we want a very so i'm just going to turn down the heat slightly mm -hmm. uh for what it was and so we're going to put uh sorry two because i think you can uh right. do a little more than one uh ginger So I'm going to mix that around and that. So basically, uh, I had come to India with the United Nations okay. to do some work in India in terms of development work. And it was during my stay uh, in India that I met Raj Gopal, mm. who at that time was running the Gandhi Peace Foundation in in Delhi. And what I was so interested in was his work with the very very poor people in villages. because i i was working more with the government and more on programs large scale programs mm -hmm. but any good development program needs people so right. it, it i began to talk to him how do we get more people engaged in our programs and it was through that that we oh, that's meet. very good mm, very that good is, that is how it happened <laughs> right so. and you know um i always ask this question what is love and i'll tell you what is the answer for that mm -hmm. that's a look to one direction look to one direction that's a great definition mm -hmm. isn't it mm -hmm. yeah and that's what exactly i see you lo both looking to one direction, one direction. Yes. that's a real sure love vision. right sure vision. yes yes right. yes yes mm -hmm. yes yes turmeric uh, powder uh, cumin powder turmeric we've done uh, coriander we're now doing cumin uh Powder. Yeah. Cayenne pepper is used when there is sauce. We have cardamom, we have vanilla, we have pepper, we have coconut. <laughs> so it's it's variety, you know. Why why Europeans got attracted to to India? Why Vasco da Gama came 600 years back to India in search of the spices, beautiful spices. As you travel in India, mm -hmm. this is amazing difference in food. What you see in North India is not what you see in South India. You see, it's a country of colors right. and country of different languages, country of different religions. Right. I mean, keeping India together is not an easy task. You know, it's it's, it's so much of diversity. So we say it is it is unity in diversity. A different languages, different colors, different cultural forms, and different. Uh, That looks food. like my kind of country. <laughs> country, yeah. Good, good, good. and then so north india uh, mainly is wheat based food uh -huh. you know when you when you go to any house what you get is chapati that is roti mm -hmm. that is made out of wheat right mm -hmm. but if you go to south what you are getting is rice so majority of indians eat rice but there is a large number of people who are eating wheat so these are the two main food Right. in terms of in terms of and is there any similarity between indian and georgian food do you think uh, there is there is yes because of the cilantro 
Yeah. Uh -huh. Mints. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think, and the herbs. Right, and both love the spicy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, yeah. a very wild food, I would yeah. say. Very yeah. kind of a. Um, and stands out. Milk stand out. Mm -hmm. And you know, you when I travel in in uh, Western part, Western Europe, it will be so difficult to find enough vegetarian food. Whereas in Georgia, it is plenty. Right. You can have enough vegetarian food. Right. So I think one good thing is that the vegetarians will find this place very interesting place because varieties of vegetarian food. True. Yeah? And the cultural and that type too, gastronomic tourists, that's what Georgia yeah. is for because mm -hmm. this business should prosper here, gastronomic tourism, yeah. because that's a very mm -hmm. nice food, as mm -hmm. you say, very yeah. unique. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. right. This is a country for tourists, I tell mm -hmm. you, because, yeah. because thousands of rivers, mm -hmm. beautiful water, beautiful landscape, what a beauty, yeah. and yeah. wonderful, yeah. wonderful yeah. people. Well, we can put the heat up now heat a little up. bit yeah. to make it a, a good faster. Yeah. I was turning it down yeah. the conversation. Well, you, you make it faster. Yeah. But it does take about 10 to 15 minutes to really get it. This is just a flavoring. So, in fact, you're not really cooking cilantro that much. Indians like cooked food, mm -hmm. well cooked food. Mm -hmm. Even vegetables, they have to cook right. very well. And uh, I'm sure you taste many cuisines, mm -hmm. and which can be your favorite? I think Georgia is right up there. Uh, mm -hmm. Georgian food. Uh, I love Indian food. I love French food. Mm -hmm. Being a vegetarian, though, French food doesn't have as many vegetarian dishes, but uh, okay. uh, beautiful foods in France. And Chinese food I love, uh, Thai food. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, there are dishes in each of those cuisines. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very, it kind of salads, cannot choose. It's so good. Yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah, yeah. Each one in has fact, a unique uh, experience. Yeah, yeah. And in Southeast Asia, they mm -hmm. have this idea of keeping a lot of green stuff on the table. You know, it's like, uh, like Thailand and Vietnam. Right. Along with your food, you have so much of green uh, people, people consume. Very interesting way of, right. way of eating. Very healthy way of eating, in fact. Mm -hmm. yeah. People on the station to see. I love the idea that you broil that uh, eggplant, and it's such a healthy way it's done, right. and uh, it's not mm, any other extra oils or anything. No, no, and you cook no, no. that. That's right. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of mm -hmm. garnishing. Actually, we don't. So we have just a mm -hmm. little bit for decorative purposes. Mm -hmm. There. Mm, mm, so good. Try it. Yeah. Let's you try should, it. You should be the first one to try. <laughs> Eggplant is my favorite. Yeah? Actually. yeah. Hot? Mm. Mm. Every ingredient mm. tells you something. Yeah. So it's not like a mushy or it's yeah. overcooked. Mm. I can, it has a crunch, it has a um, freshness mm -hmm. still mm -hmm. and it's so lightly sweet naturally sweet yeah. so yeah. it's a great great way oh, to cook the uh, uh, eggplant today yeah. I learned new things yeah. Yeah. that's an excellent dish yeah. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much I for inviting us. Pleasure. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoyed it very much yeah. and uh, I am admiring your kind people that they do missions, they go for missions and they deliver such a great message to change the world for better. better. Thank better. you for That's, that. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, if you ask me food, Kachapuri is my favorite. Right? I, will, I will go anywhere for Kachapuri. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm.